going to record. All right. So welcome tonight to your brand in public speaking. And this is by uh, Emmanuel Naji Yula. And hopefully he'll get a chance to probably peep in uh, before we get off. All right. But we're talking about public speaking. What I want to ask the question is, is there is all of you, are you like frightened to speak in front of a lot of people? Or, you know, does it make you nervous when you speak in front of a lot of people? Anyone? Anyone? Raise your hand uh, or whatever. I, I used to be. Yeah. What changed it? What changed? Well, I, I was scared because I was an introvert, so that didn't help. But um, kind of like I had to make an, an overt effort to be more outgoing. And then I was kind of thrust into a leadership position. Uh -huh. At an organization I used to belong to because there was nobody else to do it. And if I didn't do it, it wouldn't get done. So I kind of kind of learned on the fly there. And the more I did, the more comfortable I got. Yes, yes, yes. Nat. Oh, yeah. Just like Tom said, I used to be frightened to hell. But what changed for me was I just... Oh, I, I attended several uh, public speaking classes like Dale Carnegie, stuff like that. I never got into Toastmaster. I wish I did. Oh, yeah. But uh, what I did was that uh, I just definitely used the system whereby I pretend or I, that everybody in the audience is naked. Uh huh. And I'm the only one who's clothed. <laughs> so I have an upper hand on everybody. Then what I do secondly is that I do my homework well enough that I become an expert in whatever I'm going to talk about. Mm -hmm. it's, almost, it's almost like telling your own life history or story. Right. Only you can say it best. Nobody knows what it is. So that helps me to get over it. And I just learn to scan the audience and pick out some friendly faces and kind of focus on them every now and then throughout the room as I'm speaking. Yeah. That's, that's helped me. Anyway, that, thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, Ms. Deidre. Yes, ma'am. Uh, have you ever, uh, you know, do you have any fear or, or speaking or in front of audience or singing? No. <laughs> no. I do not. I don't have that year back maybe when i was 17 i'm when i was younger in my teens i i mean i used to be a little nervous back then but the older i got it just the fear just left me so um no i don't have i don't have that yeah well and you know it's it's good because what he what we're going to talk about is increased self-confidence and uh, the, a presentation, first of all, is a critical business tool. And whether uh, your communication goal is to persuade, sell, or inspire, effective presentation skills are what will differentiate you from competitors. So yes. think of it as the jewel in your crown. You. When properly executed, your presentation will make you stand out. Your audience will view you as a prepared, informed, and confident public speaker. Engage and influence your audience. Effective public speaking and presence can help get a message across and influence an audience in memorable ways. During a presentation, effectively communicating in a way that's truly electric, allowing people to see the most intelligent, trustworthy, and irresistible parts of your character. All right, did someone please put their phone on mute? Let's see who we got here. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, and so as you draw people in, forming more meaningful, authentic, and lasting, lasting relationships, you'll uncover even more opportunities for growth. From tackling new and different projects to taking on more responsibility to doing work that has the power to affect more people in more places. So uh, 
you know, public speaking is very important. You know, when you're in front of people, you want to make sure you're looking your best. You want to make sure that, you know, you're speaking clearly and you want to make sure that uh, your audience are engaged. You are engaged with your audience. All right. So, okay. Where's this? All right. So what are some good tips for public speaking? Snakes, fine, flying, uh, no problem. Public speaking, yikes. Just thinking about public speaking routinely described as one of the greatest and most common fears can make your palms sweat. But there are many ways to tackle this anxiety and learn to deliver a memorable speech. Anybody ever been up in front of an audience speaking and while you were speaking, you kind of forgot what you were talking about? Anybody ever done that? No, like, what was I, what was I talking about? You know, or or did you forget to say something that was even in your notes that you wanted to point out or that you wanted to say and you didn't get a chance to say it because your nervousness or whatever? Sometimes we go through that, you know. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Um, Mitchell, for being here. God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, and you feel like, you know, you're talking, but for some reason, has, you know, you're talking, but you don't see the people. <laughs> You know, it's like you don't see the people, but you know they're there. Sometimes we go through that. All right. All right. So here are uh, his um, 10 tips for public speaking. And I'm going to ask if uh, uh, Nat Olulu will come and read Nervousness is Normal, Practice and Prepare. Okay. All people feel some psychological reactions like pounding hearts and trembling hands. Do not associate these feelings with the sense that you will perform purely, I mean poorly, or make a fool of yourself. Some nerves are good. The adrenaline rush that makes you sweat also makes you more alert and ready to give your best performance. The best way to overcome anxiety is to prepare. Prepare and prepare some more. Take the time to go over your notes several times. Once you have become comfortable with the material, practice a lot. Videotape yourself or get a friend to critique your performance. Anyone ever done that? When you had to sing or when you had to do a performance, you know, you get somebody to critique you or to time you or anything like that. Anybody ever did that before? How you prepare for your speech, right? Yes, yes. I believe that specifically motivational speakers, preachers, teachers, um, singers, um, motivational, all of those, they, you know, they have to prepare for their, uh, what they're going to say. And sometimes when you prepare what you're going to say, sometimes when you get in front of people, it may go a different way. So number two, know your audience. Your speech is about them, not you. All right. Um, Solicitor Hope, I saw you, Minister Solicitor Hope. Can you read number two for me? Uh, okay, you said number two, know yes. your audience. Yes. It's about them, not you. Um, before you begin to craft your message, consider who the message is intended for. Learn as much about your listeners as you can. This will help you determine your choice of words, level of information, organization pattern, and motivational statement. So, yes. So, it helps you to get prepared. Uh, and if you remember who you are speaking to, your audience, who are the audience? Where, what, you know, what is the theme of what, what you're talking about? Uh, you know, what are you, what do they want to hear? Some things you have to think about, you know, have you ever spoke in front of an audience and they just sitting there looking at you like this? You know, like they not paying attention to you at all. I mean, they, you know, and there's a scripture in the Bible that says, don't look at their faces, look, you know, uh, look at their foreheads, you know, don't look at their faces. And so sometimes you got to think about 
what uh, somebody else is saying, you know, how, how do you speak? How do you, what are you going to say? You know, and when people are looking at you like that, you almost kind of like, mm, let me hear you up and get through with this. They not hearing me at all. It kind of make you feel a little bit like you making a fool of yourself almost, you know? So uh, thank you so much, Minister. Dr. Yvette Mitchell, um, is it possible you can read, uh, come off mute and read number three for me? Just a minute, I was just telling my little one that she has to either turn everything down or, or leave my room here. But then, nonetheless, you want me to do number three? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, create the framework for your speech. Mm -hmm. Write down the topic, general purpose, specific purpose, central idea, and the main points. Mm -hmm. Make sure you grab the audience attention in the first 30 seconds. Amen to that. Yes. So, <laughs> no. Yes. So now, thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Mitchell. Organize your material in the most effective manner to attain your purpose. And so in reading that, do you agree with that, Dr. Mitchell? Uh, yes. If you are newly doing this, yes. It, it, this is excellent information. Yes. Yes. Make sure you create your framework. Now, listen, even on television, you have to create your framework uh, for your speech. You have to create it so that when you're on camera or, or you're doing a video that you are already knowing your topic, your general purpose, the specific purpose and the uh, central idea and the main points you want to touch. Has anybody ever spoken and they had some main points or they did not prepare? I, I won't say they have main points. They didn't prepare and you found yourself all over the place. Sometimes, you know, that happens when we don't study or when we don't get a specific uh, thing. We're all over the place and we're trying to talk and we're trying to remember from, you know, what we want to say and what we want to hit. And that can really be something that you can lose your audience in the first 30 seconds. So let's go to the next one. All right. Uh, number four. Miss uh, um, Deidre, are you able to read number four for me? I can't see everybody who's here. Ms. Deidre? Yes, ma'am. Yes, if you can read number four for me. Oh, no. Let me see if I can read. No. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Keep the focus on the audience. Gaze their reactions. Judge your message and stay flexible. Delivering a canned speech will guarantee that you lose the attention of or confuse even the most devoted listeners. So yes, you want to watch for feedback and adapt to it. For those who give you feedback, you want to hear what they have to say. Even if there's some uh, constructive criticism, you want to make sure that you get what that feedback, keep the focus on the audience, gauge their reactions. You know, this is why sometimes, you know, I'm looking at everybody's face or I want to see how people are reacting to what I'm teaching because what I want to teach or what I want to speak about, what I want to say, I want it to count. I don't want them to just go away with nothing and you've uh, talked for 30 minutes and and they didn't get anything so it's you know gauge their reactions uh adjust your message if you have to and stay flexible and delivering a canned speech will guarantee that you lose the attention or of or confuse even the most devoted listeners that you have even those that always listen to you that like to hear you teach or talk you can lose them as well all right number five number five I'm going to ask Brother Irwin. Brother Irwin. Hi, Brother Irwin. I'm glad to see you tonight. And uh, I'm going to ask if you would read number five. And then I'm going to ask Tom Pohl if you could read number six for me. All right. So, Irwin, if you can read number five, that'd be great. Let your personality come through. Be yourself. Don't become a talking head in any type of communication. You will establish better credibility if your personality shines through and your audience will trust what you have to say if they can see you as a real person. 
Yes, you got to let your real you come out, the personality that you have. You know, people want to see real people. That's one thing in my uh, way of, of dealing with people. I don't like fake people. I don't like phony people, people who smile in your face and, and then they talk about you behind your back or say, you know, oh, I just I just go to her class because, you know, I just want to get, you know, just want to get everybody to see me. I don't want, you know, I don't like her teaching or I don't you know whatever it is. I want my true personality to come out so people can see who I am in the beginning. Now, whether they like me or not is not my issue my 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 thing is i want them to get the teaching i want them to see that i have a personality that says i i want you to get the wisdom and the knowledge and i want to be able to help others to grow and that is so important so uh let your personality come through make sure they see you happy make sure they see well whatever your personality is somebody everybody ain't yeah so whatever your personality is your real personality let them see the real you all right all right so number six okay number six use humor tell stories and use effective language inject a funny antidote into your presentation and you will certainly grab your audience's attention Audiences generally like a personal touch on a speech. A story can provide that. Yes. So when you're talking, use uh, some of that, the humor. Tell stories about, you know, uh, I, I often tell stories about my my uh, animal stories, my fear of animals or, or you know, something I've been through when I was uh, growing up, you know, funny stories that I think might be funny. It all depends on the atmosphere in the room and what you're talking about. So I, can, I, I, I had an issue with birds and, and I had an uh, issue with some cows that was trying to get in the car and all those kinds of things so sometimes you tell those funny stories and you let people hear uh some of your uh life experiences and it can help uh to to kind of mild the crowd if or 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 to engage and let them hear some of your stories and the things that you have gone through even in your own uh your own life right so yes i've got some real real animal stories <laughs> so thank you so much all right i'm going to ask uh let's see i think we have some other people here um uh, uh i believe xi xi now staff can you tell me who you are and if you can read number seven for me? I apologize. I don't look uh, at that and I should because it's Denise. But I feel so, you. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm surrounded by animals. <laughs> I make you nervous. Okay, let me enlarge this. Don't read unless you have to. Work from an outline. Reading from a script or a slide fractures the interpersonal connection. By maintaining eye contact with the audience, you keep the focus on yourself and your message. A brief outline can serve to jog your memory and keep you on task. And that's what you wanna do. You wanna stay on task. How many times have you ever talked or taught uh, something and you got way off uh, off of what your message was really about or what, what you were trying to teach. Sometimes people get kind of get off of what they were trying to teach or trying to convey to the crowd. They get stuck on that one thing and all of a sudden it, it goes a whole different way and you end up not teaching or following your outline. Anybody ever done that? I'm telling you, I have. <laughs> for sure, uh, because you you somebody ask a question and then you start talking and all of a sudden you go somewhere else, you know, and then you try, have to try to come back to your outline. And so that is so important that you remember to write an outline and try to follow that outline. It is very important that you do that. All right. Solicitor, Minister Solicitor Hope, uh, can you read number eight for me, please? Use your voice and your hands effectively. Omit nervous gestures. Nonverbal communication carries most of the message. Good delivery does not call attention to itself, but instead conveys the speaker's ideas clearly 
clearly and without distraction. So how many of you have ever really been nervous talking? Before I started talking, I never really uh, got in front of an audience. I was very shy when I was younger. I would sing, but I wouldn't, I didn't want to get up in front of anybody because I was not, I felt like, you're not a preacher. You can't speak loud. I never really spoke a real loud. And, and, you know, I was always kind of reserved all the time. And then when God called me to, um, to the ministry, uh, I had no other choice but to allow the Lord to use me. And then I used to speak, you know, like this, and the Bible says this, and, and people would be like, you got to speak up, speak up, you know. And so then all of a sudden, I just kept praying and asking God, Lord, help me to deliver your word since you, you know, you've called me and I need you to help me. And so now I'm not afraid to speak up or to say what God has given me to say. I'm not nervous in front of a crowd anymore. Now, don't get me wrong. I still get nervous, <clears throat> excuse me, because a little nervousness is good sometimes. If you're not nervous, then you need to kind of say, okay, I'm, you know, but, and you think you got it like that all the time. How many of you have ever thought you just had something, you went up and spoke and it didn't go nothing like the way you wanted it to go. And you felt bad because you, you know, you didn't do what you're supposed to do. And you got, you, you're like, oh my God, I should have really studied. I should have, you know, did this. I should have done that because sometimes we think we have it. But uh, we must use our voice and our hands uh, effectively, not to be nervous gestures, you know, shaking or because I had a mic. When I did the red carpet, I was so nervous that my, I don't know if anybody could see the mic shaking. I was running, uh, uh, kept running up the steps with uh, uh, Apostle Marilyn Tobin. And I was, oh, I was really like this, oh, Lord. <laughs> You know, so, and then I was shaking. So I was a little nervous, but I got through it. And uh, she said I did a good job. Although to me, I felt like, you know, I could have just slowed down, maybe, you know, stop breathing so hard because I was so nervous. But I think it went well, according to them. All right. So for number nine, number nine, let me see who we got. Can we get someone to read number nine? All right. Uh, Brother Dale Rob, uh, D Rob, D Rob, will you do me a favor and come off mute and read number nine for me? Can you do that? Okay, let me rescue him. <laughs> okay, come on, rescue your brother. <laughs> he, he's probably not uh, paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number nine, grab attention at the beginning and close with a dynamic end. Do you enjoy hearing the speech? Start with, today I'm going to talk to you about X. Most people don't, don't, okay. Instead, they use a startling statistics and interest, interesting anecdote or concise quotation. Conclude your speech with a summary and a strong statement that your audience is sure to remember. Yes, you have to do that. You have to conclude your speech with something that they remember. It's just like a singer. When a singer sings, they want people to remember that last note, actually, that note that they hit, whether it be high, low, but it has to be on key or whatever. Because when, when you're done, they're going to remember the very last thing that you did or said. So make sure you say something at the end that they will take away with them and they will always remember you and your speech. So number 10, I'll read number 10. Use audiovisual aids wisely. Too many can break the direct connection to the audience. So use them sparingly. They should enhance or clarify your content or capture and maintain your audience attention. So we got to make sure that we, if you have audio visual, use your audio visuals, make sure they're clear, make sure they're, uh, uh, that they can hear and know what you're saying, you know, make sure that everyone is able to hear from the front to the, all the way to the back and see, all right, and see everything that you're doing. You got to make sure that your presentation, because the first impression is usually the lasting impression. And so you got to make sure that everything that you're doing is 
uh, prepared. Usually what happens when we come on the Zoom, I try my best to get on the Zoom early because usually things can happen. And so we wanna make sure that we get on early and that we are not, uh, you know, uh, because when things happen now, you're late, you lost 15 minutes of your, your teaching or your class, and now you, and you still only got 20 minutes. So, you know, I don't know where, how people, they figure I'm late uh, and I still have the same time. That doesn't make sense. You have to, you know, know that when you go in there, you've got 20 minutes and you've wasted 15 of those minutes. So next, now you only got five minutes. Okay, I'll come back next time. That's all you got to say. That's all the time you got to say. I'm sorry, I, it didn't work this time. I'll come back next time and I'll be able to do the entire class. Other than that, it's really difficult. All right, so with that, uh, Emmanuel wanted to give you all, give all of us an assignment. And the assignment is three minute talk as if you were in front of an audience, any subject you want to choose. And it's due for November the 3rd on that class. All right. And he says, thank you so very much for, um, listening and, uh, looking at the slides. So with that being said, please make sure that you next on November the 3rd, He's going to ask you for a three minute talk as if you're talking to audience and you can use any subject. All right. So make sure you get prepared for that. Anyone has any comments, any questions? Come on, let's talk. Let's talk. We got a few minutes. Um, Dr. Holmes. Yes. Uh, one of the joys I have is, um, I'm sorry, sorry, Ms. Lady Denise, I didn't raise my hand and I know better as a teacher, but I teach That's teachers fine. to teach. I teach teachers to think uh, to teach and so the nervousness that they feel I understand and the simplest thing that I tell them um, to help them is something that uh, Emmanuel I think uh, touched on in number nine is a formula that I use all the time tell your audience what you're going to tell them then tell them and then tell them what you told them mm -hmm. it's just a three-step just Tell them that's the beginning. The middle is tell them and the end is then tell them what you told them. Mm -hmm. It's just a good formula. It's easier because teachers get as nervous standing in front of kids, do you believe, as standing in front of adults. And nervousness, as you said, is good because if you're not nervous, that's when you really look, that's when you really do not do a good job. So as many times as I've taught and been in front of audiences and things, I still get the little butterflies because you know why? I wanna, I'm concerned that I'm gonna meet the needs of the audience. And mm -hmm. the other thing is, I don't look at their foreheads. I need to look at their eyes and I need to look at their gestures because they inspire me. Yes, yes. And I feed off of it. And sometimes we do go, and as a preacher, I know you that sometimes you do end up going in a different direction because you're responding to the audience. So stay in touch, stay, there's a chemistry and a connection yes. that goes on, it's just wonderful. So that's my piece as an, as an instructor or a teacher. Yes, a I, I, I thank you because I think that you could um, probably help and, and double with uh, Emmanuel and teach these, these kind of classes because of, of your expertise in speaking in front of uh, audiences and others. So I, I appreciate that and thank you so much. You're quite yes. welcome. Lady Denise. Um, I, you know, I agree with Dr. Mitchell. I still get nervous just answering questions and I do not like to be put on the spot. I do not like it when, um, especially one of our leaders always says, I'm gonna call on Denise to speak. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, you know, because it takes me a minute to process what I've just heard. <laughs> so then I began concentrating on everything that, you know, I may not say correctly and how people will feel, but I will tell you, um, because I came from the State Department of Education, we did a lot of training. It, it is harder to teach on Zoom to me than it is in a live audience because you're not getting that feedback, whether it be negative or positive, you're not getting the feedback from the Zoom because a lot of us are staying behind our screen 
and it's hard to read. Are they really listening or, you know, am I going too long or what? So it's hard to evaluate yourself as you're talking. Yes, I agree with that. And a lot of times that's why, you know, when I come off, I say, hey, I need you all to talk to me because I want to make sure that my teaching counts. I want to make sure what I'm saying that you're getting. Um, and I, I believe Dr. Mitchell is one of those who says she loves to see their faces. She loves for us to come off of video because it is so much more personable and interacting. So I, I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Lady Denise. All right, Brother Nat. Yeah, so sorry. I mean, so sorry about that. Actually, maybe Salista should, should probably go before me because mine is just uh, a public service announcement. Now, please don't forget that Daryl is doing his uh, campo here shortly. I'm opening for him, and I would like for him to feel supported somehow, OK? Actually, talk about the subject at hand. As you all know, I have, an, I have an accent, right? But I don't let that stop me. I feel like if I have something important to share with you, you will be smart enough to listen. I remember when I left Nigeria to come to America at the age of 22, starting from day one, when I, became, when I went to elementary school, we were learning English like it's no man's business. The, the coins English. I mean, I thought I could beat anybody in English language, English literature, just name it. Then I came to America. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> the very first week, I could not even understand my, my professors. I said, what kind of English are these people speaking? So I had to glue myself to the television every day, listening to commercials, trying to so now today, I can hear any American. I don't care what state you're from, from a whisper. I don't know what they are saying. So they say, so if it's, if it's, if it's to be, it's up to you. That's the key right here. And uh, that's just what I wanted to share. But of course, we have to do our best to make sure we are understood. Yes. By slowing yes. down, enunciating properly. I mean, I, I still say, Tomato, you may say tomato. I still say, you know, stuff like that, you know, it's grounded in me, it's tough to change all that. Like lorry, you know, mm -hmm. lorry is my truck, you know, <laughs> things like that. But anyway, I just wanted to share that. Well, please remember to support Daryl. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, uh, Nat. You know, we we love your accent, and I and I'm beginning to understand you more better better every every day, every time you talk. So I get to uh, you know understand you better all the time. So the more you talk, so keep talking, keep being here, keep talking. <laughs> we need you. All right, Minister Solicitor. Yes, I just was saying the exact same thing to you on the class earlier that I don't know what it is about when I'm speaking on Zoom, I get nervous, but if I'm in person, I speak, you know, speak totally more confident. I, I, I'm just, and then um, uh, Lady Denise said it, you know, it's the same thing that I was feeling, you know, uh, if I'm in a crowd of, of people, I don't know, I could, I could sing all day in front of people. And I, I can't understand it because I'm still in a, in a crowd with the audience. And it don't bother me to sing. I don't get nervous. You know, I be nervous um, while I'm walking up there. But once I open my mouth and start singing, the fear goes away. But when it's come to me, when it comes to me talking, I get so nervous. And, um, you know, I had a teacher used to tell me in school that pick a spot on the wall, a clock or something. And, you know, you, you it may appear that you're looking at the audience, but you're not. You're just looking at that clock. And um, even when, when I sing, I, I have always sung with my eyes closed. And I have been trying to work on that my whole life with opening my eyes. But for some reason, when I open my eyes and start singing, <laughs> I get nervous. But as long as my eyes close, I don't get nervous. So I guess I'm going to have to work on that before I come, come to, this, to the gallery and sing. Because I don't know about it. why she got her eyes closed? But I'm praying on I'm trying to work on that. Well, you're going you to do just beautifully. I know it, without a doubt. You're going to do good. So thank, thank you. you. <laughs> uh, Dr. Mitchell, I see your hand is up. 
just two comments to make. Um, and one is the solicitor. Um, that's just gaining confidence. The more she does it, the more she will. And she just has to open her eyes and she can find out how wonderful because people appreciate and you can see that in their eyes. And even in Zoom, the reason I like to look at faces because I like to look at eyes. I've looked at enough eyes is I can see when the light bulb is going off mm -hmm. or I can see if you're confused. So that's why I like to look at your eyes. Um, so if you look at this spot on the back of the wall, you miss some of the expressions. It also tell you when you're not doing well. Yeah. And you have to rebound from that. The second thing is I just, I love accents as well. I was, when I was um, in college, in undergrad work, uh, I, I was in a, a, an advanced algebra class and she happened to be from India. And my student colleagues would just fuss. I can't understand her. I, can't. I said, if you listen to learn and stop focusing on her accent, after a period of time, the accent actually disappears or lowers. And you can understand as we can better understand that from the first time he talked to now. Because yeah. if you're listening to him, really to learn something or to understand, the accent disappears after a while. So that's just for people that have problems with, um, with, um, with accents. Because a lot of people have, especially if you've been there in college and you have different uh, people from different ethnic groups. So just listen carefully. That's and right. that accent will disappear. And solicitor, just open your eyes. It's a wonderful world you're missing by not looking at people directly. You know, and they they feel the same. They're a little nervous with you talking, but <laughs> just get over that. <laughs> yes, I and and I agree told, told, wholeheartedly. I when I was growing up and I was a girl, I used to sing with my eyes closed as well, uh, Minister Solicitor. And my auntie came to me and she said, "Why do you sing with your eyes closed?" And I said, "Well, because I just I don't want to look at the people. <laughs> you know, I would just want to just sing." She said, "Open those eyes." She said, oh, look at them people, sing to them people, because that's who you're singing, you're singing to the people, you know, you're singing to them, you want to, them to feel your, your, your anointing that flows out of you, and uh, eye contact is very good, I didn't, I didn't learn to do that until she told me, and so every time I would sing, and she would come and she said, Oh, I saw you had your eyes open. I said, yeah. I said, but I, I forgot the words when I had my eyes open. <laughs> you know, so I had to learn how to sing with my eyes open and to sing to people and not just singing for myself or, and, you know, not in a bad way, but just singing, you know, because I could sing, but to sing to people because they want to feel the presence of God as you sing and they will. So, yeah, I agree. Open those beautiful eyes, girl. You're going to be wonderful.